Okay, I'm back. We are discussing Andy, <clears throat> excuse me, Andy Davis's article entitled Shearwater Dive Computer Settings Become a Power User. Big thick article. Amazing. Absolutely amazing information. Watch my introduction video because as I said in that, I'm going to go through step by step every single thing that he discusses in the article in a video. And I'm going to explain it in my own words, but I'm going to be using his words. And I just thought it would be great to have this in a video format rather than just pulling up an article. So this first part of the discussion is... What are shear water gradient factors? I paused. Can you tell me, do you think in simple to understand terminology, what are the shear water gradient factors? Now listen, I love this part of his discussion. Many recreational divers believe that decompression models are only for technical divers. There's no such thing as a non-decompression dive. Every single dive is a decompression dive. Even if you stay within the no-stop diving limits, you're still having bubbles form inside your body, and you're still having to decompress. The word itself explains this stuff. The bubbles are compressed into solution, and we want to, as we go up, decompress the bubbles. They come out of compression. They expand through your body, ultimately going through your lungs and coming out. It's just that simple. So every single time we go underwater, it's a decompression dive. Now, what is happening inside your body with the nitrogen? Because understanding that is really important. And I don't know if you felt this before. I have, and I certainly have as I get older. Um, he calls it post-dive fatigue. You know, you, you just feel kind of tired. I feel way less of that on a rebreather, by the way. When I'm on open circuit, I really, really feel that tiredness. I rarely feel it when I'm using my rebreather because I can control the partial pressure of my uh, of what's going on in my body. I'm always maintaining a certain partial pressure of oxygen and it's way less nitrogen buildup. So this post-dive fatigue, we can avoid it or we can significantly help reduce it if you understand the theory behind optimizing your ascents to the surface. This whole thing is about how do we come up in such a way that we minimize the effects of these bubbles decompressing out of solution and expanding through your body. That's what we're all trying to deal with. Okay, so let's, he does again, he demystifies these decompression models. I love this. Let's talk about it in his words. Diving exposes you to increased pressure. Go underwater, you got more pressure than you do at the, at the surface. You then absorb nitrogen into your body tissues. There's these theoretical tissues that they made up. It's 16 different tissue compartments that were sort of defined. Like some are quicker absorbing, some are bone and, and, and take longer to absorb bubbles. So they just broke it up into these theoretical 16 tissue compartments. When you come up, the surrounding pressure decreases. Nitrogen in your body remains at the higher pressure, and that difference in pressure causes the bubbles to form. Greater pressure difference creates more and larger bubbles. So if you come up quickly, wow, that's a huge quick differential in the pressure, and it makes the bubbles expand too quickly. It's just that simple. Now, he goes on to say that only large bubbles, only blah, 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 large bubbles cause decompression sickness, DCS. And as you know, I'm familiar with that. And 
You see, your dive computer, that's what it's focused on. It's trying to avoid large bubbles from forming. But these tiny bubbles, these micro bubbles, that in theory we all can tolerate a certain amount of these tiny small bubbles coming out of solution, going through your body, and ultimately coming out. We all can tolerate a theoretical amount of those. Now, we don't yet have the ability to actually monitor during the dive exactly what's going on inside of your body. That would be amazing, right? Imagine if I had something implanted in my body that could read my real bubbles. So these are based upon models. It doesn't know if I have more micro bubbles than you have, or basically than some young Navy SEAL diver has. It's just theoretical. Now, in theory, they're too small to cause injury. However, in large numbers, they have this physiological effect, right? Of uh, this physiological, physiological effect called um, that post-dive fatigue. It's, he, he says it's known as decompression stress. So, we know the large bubbles can cause physical injury, right? You're bent. And that's DCS. Dive computers avoid these large bubbles. Tiny bubbles, in theory, don't cause injury, but too many of them can cause this post-dive fatigue, and that's known as decompression stress. Your dive computer is not programmed to avoid tiny bubbles. You have to do that for yourself. That's what we're about to discuss. How do we do that? Okay. Well, here is the primary goal of the ascent. The primary aim is to minimize the speed, to reduce the severity of that pressure change on your body, to reduce the formation of these bubbles inside your body. So reducing that speed, that's just it. Just come up slowly. But it's not that easy, right? That's what he goes on to say. If you come up too slow, that means you're deeper for longer. Nitrogen continues to be absorbed in your body. Getting shallower with more nitrogen in your body causes more bubbles. So, uh, yeah, the secondary aim of a diving descent then is to remove as much nitrogen from your body before you surface. That's the whole goal here. This reduces the formation of bubbles after your dive. Now, pressure difference forces nitrogen to leave your body. Greater pressure differential causes faster nitrogen removal. So, in short, you want more pressure difference to increase the efficiency of nitrogen removal from your body. Now we have to do a balance, a balancing act. Balancing nitrogen removal against bubble formation. So, he goes on to very clearly explain, ascending from scuba dive has to balance these two conflicting aims. I love this explanation, man. It's so logical. You need to avoid rapid decrease in pressure. We all know that. Basic 101 open water dive class. You need pressure difference, though, to remove the nitrogen. So I don't want to uh, increase that pressure too quickly, but I have to increase it, or decrease it, excuse me, decrease the pressure in order to get the nitrogen out of my body. If you are overdoing one and you get the balance wrong, that causes this decompression stress or potentially even making you bent, DCS. So what is the optimal diving ascent rate? For the greatest safety from DCS, an ideal diving ascent has to hit a sweet spot. That's a quote from him. He goes on to say you need to get shallower to maximize nitrogen removal. We got to come up to get rid of the nitrogen, but not spike it. Because if we make that pressure differential too big, too fast, too many bubbles come, big bubbles come, and we get bent. Finding the sweet spot is our goal. 
Here is the ultimate beautiful part of the article. Now we're going to get into the meat of it. You can opt to display that information through your Shearwater Dive computer settings. That's the next video. So tune in because the next one is called Shearwater Dive Computer Settings and the famous Bowman ZHL16C. That's 16 compartments. Uh, settings is what we're going to discuss next. And um, it's going to be awesome. See you on the next one.